Uh, okay, so it's quite. Uh, I, I guess I'm your warm-up guy because I'm going to kind of uh, kind of set the scene for the uh, for the rest of the session. Um, as you said, this I co-authored a paper with uh, four other people, uh, which was just published in IEEE Computer, and uh, you may have you may have heard of some of these already. Uh, Jonathan Bowen, who uh, is the uh, if you like, I was going to say father of Z, maybe grandfather of Z. Uh, he still uh, he's done a lot of work in promoting uh, formal methods Z in particular to uh, to the community. Uh, Mike Hinchy, uh, if you like, high priest of Na former of NASA, now uh, in Lero, we call him the formal Methodist, and uh, Sue Black, who uh, you may have seen in the press recently in uh, her other activity campaigning for Bletchley Park. She was our scum mistress. Uh, in this uh, in this venture, <coughs> so okay. So the rest of the talk is all about me, not about four methods. So uh, no, just joking. Um, so I just say uh, what my background is. Uh, so I did a PhD in program transformation. Uh, looking back at it recently, there was quite a lot of category theory in it, but really I don't think there was enough category theory in it. Hence the reason for not being able to stay in academia and moving into industry, which I refer to industry light working uh, on hardware compilation and then high-level synthesis uh, and then so my, my true love was always formal methods still is so it was an opportunity to work for PRQA who produce uh, static analysis tools for C and C++ you may have heard of them so I worked there for a spell and now I'm more or less a customer if you like of tools promoting uh, software quality within Hornbill so still an enthusiast of formal methods um, and one of the other things I do outside is to organize formal methods seminars and I'll talk a little bit about that at the end. So I've got uh, about 500 slides, so I'm going to be uh, fairly agile in my approach, and I'm going to try and adapt to the mood of the audience. So if I see you uh, fall asleep, I might accelerate, or if I see uh, people leave, I might accelerate as well. And if you start throwing things at me, then I probably would have left by then anyway. So. Okay, so uh, assuming I'm in the right room, uh, I'm going to talk about um, a little bit of background with agile, uh, some formal methods background, uh, talk about coexistence of formal methods and Agile, um, talk a little about the cost of Agile, and then give a summary. Uh, so, because it's like the first talk, I should try and make it a little bit fun, in inverted commas if I can, so there might be the old joke here and there. So please laugh. If you enjoyed the talk, tell me later. If you didn't enjoy it, then please just email my collaborators. Thank you. Right, so, why don't we first of all, I'm going to try and make this as interactive as possible. So. I thought we'd have a little quiz to start off with. Okay, so the first prize, <laughs> quite a few of these around at the moment, so we're going to give one of those away. Second prize, you're going to get a PlayStation 3. And of course, we don't want the runner-up to miss out, so the runner-up's going to get both. <laughs> right, without further ado. Okay, so anyone, any ideas what that this number could possibly correspond to? Given the clue that we're talking about uh, software development, formal and agile, 63,000. Any ideas? Okay, it was a number of bugs in Windows 2000. <laughs> you probably, how was I see you say only 63,000? Yeah, well, <laughs> okay, 2,000 plus. Any ideas what that could be? Some bit fixed in the next release. <laughs> uh, well, this bit probably be, the next bit to be censored actually. So it's the number of pages of Z specifications. So I'm told by an anonymous person in a certain air traffic control system you might hear about later on today. Uh, Seven hundred. Any ideas what that could refer to? So apparently this is the number of lines of code written per month by an agile agile developer. Quite astonishing. What about this? 280,210. Any ideas? It was actually the day that the PlayStation 3 bug was revealed. <laughs> right, so we've already heard that in 2001, so it's, it's, just, it's quite interesting, these uh, 17 people went on a skiing trip, okay, did various things, ski, eat, drink, and uh, discussed common interests, and what they came up with was this idea of the Agile Manifesto. So the things in bold are the things that really they're interested in. They're not dismissing as such the things that aren't in bold. But the things that they're really kind of focusing on are uh, individuals and interactions, working software over 
comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and responding to change over following the plan. So you can read all about this and much more on agilemanifesto.org. So uh, you'll see that um, when you look in the agile literature, you'll see that there's different approaches. Uh, three that uh, are quite common, extreme programming, Scrum, and BSDM. So extreme programming, you're talking about um, user stories and implementing those. Scrum, you have uh, sprints at, at times where you, you're developing and you have a number of sprints in a release. And BSDM, you have uh, fixed costs and a fixed number of resources, and you work to those. Uh, techniques as well, you'll see things like uh, pairwise programming and test-driven development. Uh, just one, one anecdote, somebody I worked with once was a, was a fan of uh, pairwise programming, and he told me that uh, his colleague he used to work with, whenever he used to go to the restroom, he came back and this guy had actually changed names of variables and things like that. So, of course, if you had a coding standard, no, that wouldn't happen because he was choosing the names that he thought were, were good to have. So hopefully that doesn't happen in, uh, in other industries. Okay, another quiz. So, two, two statements here. Agile is about producing software quickly, and Agile is about being responsive to change. So, uh, any ideas which one might be true and which one might be false? Maybe they're both true, maybe they're both false. Who thinks the first one is true? Who thinks the second one is true? Okay, there you go. We've got some strong contenders so far for this uh, for the <laughs> for the car. Anyway, right. So agile is about being is about being responsive to change. So it's not about producing software quickly. And some people think that is what it's all about. Okay. So what I've shown on here is uh, some examples of some companies that have used agile successfully. So um, I don't, I'm not sure if you're familiar with BBC iPlayer, but uh, in the UK, if you miss a program on, on the BBC channels, you can watch it uh, on demand. Uh, unfortunately, they only keep it online for about 30 days or something like that. But, but the BBC iPlayer is an example of uh, a piece of software that was developed uh, using agile techniques. Uh, BT, British Tele uh, Telecom, um, have also used, B uh, also used uh, agile successfully. And they have several thousand developers distributed in different countries and they've uh, been able to uh, report successes using Agile. Uh, Symantec have used XP, uh, and the various other companies on there have reported, um, Primavera has, has reported that it's, it's a 21-year-old product they have, but we're using Agile approaches, they've been able to kind of improve the software, reduce costs, and et cetera, et cetera. But I, of course, no one can stand here and say that Agile is, is the answer to all our, our problems, otherwise there'd be nothing left for me to talk about because I just have to do Agile and nothing else. But I think it's fair to say that there are some, uh, some drawbacks with Agile. Um, just think here. So we don't have, uh, well there's a lack of comprehensive documentation. It's not that there isn't any documentation, it's just there isn't enough, really, in general. Um, writing tests up front is, is obviously a good thing, but of, of course you can't test everything and um, anybody who says they can is, is being a little bit, uh, a little bit cheeky. Um, rapidly changing change of requirements. So, so people in the Agile world, they welcome uh, changes to uh, requirements, but you've got this whole problem about traceability. You've got to be able to see what's changing, what the system is supposed to be doing. And also refactoring code uh, can introduce defects. Because the idea is you, you write some code, you keep refactoring, improving it over and over again. But without the right kind of uh, tools, you can actually make your software worse than it was before. 